Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. Well, the indicators that the bottom for the market is in continue to roll in. And it's, you know, maybe it's a good thing. If you're one of the people that's very fearful out there, you got the scare, scare feels, then you would love for these bottom indicators to really truly be in at the bottom and start seeing this move to the upside. Other people would be disappointed in that, though, because they'd love to purchase lower. So it does depend on specifics, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, desires of the individual. Um, but it, it, it kind of begs the question. I'm sitting here thinking, do I have enough crypto? Do I have enough XRP? Which, by the way, is my largest holding. Uh, it got big enough that I realized in October of 2020 that if I didn't stop purchasing XRP, I may have a serious problem. So I haven't purchased since then, but it's still by a good bit uh, my largest crypto holding. But given what's been going on here and the additional time to accumulate, do I actually have enough? Do you think that you have enough? It's all It's all subjective. But uh, let's not talk about that. But before going further, I do want to be clear that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Now, just to illustrate a point, um, for those of you that can look at your screen, I do think it's worth it. I got a chart on the screen. This is the price of Bitcoin. This was shared by Income Sharks. Uh, he's a, a chart analyst all up on Twitters, and I enjoy what he has to say. Uh, he's got a deserved large following of 352,000 followers, and he's highlighting drops in crypto, specifically this is a Bitcoin chart, but this year. Of course, I'm just saying because the whole market moved in tandem, but this is a Bitcoin chart, and he's highlighted three gigantic drops, the first of which was in May. And here's what he had to say, hashtag Bitcoin. It becomes harder to create a big drop the lower we go. Look at the small sell volume that dropped us 32% or even 43%. It took a historic event like FTX with max fear and the most selling volume ever in history to drop us 26%. $10,000 targets is another 40%. How? Which is a fair question. So let me just make sure everybody understands what he's saying here. The first drop here, you can see this is when Luna started to collapse back in the, you know, the first part of May. That resulted in, in May this year, 32% drop for the price of Bitcoin right then. Very scary times, right? Okay, well, look at look at the sell volume that came in to make that happen. You can see that there was a jump here as, as the, the price of Bitcoin is falling. And this is typically what you see, whether you see a really big positive price action or really big negative price action, whichever direction it's going. If you're seeing it move quickly in one direction, there's almost always going to be a ton of volume. And so that is what you saw here. So you can see that there was a spike in volume. You can see it with your own human eyes. And then there was additional scary, scary news. Look uh, here towards, the, you know, as you're approaching the middle of, of June of this year, there was a, there were additional uh, bankruptcies. I can't remember which ones were hitting the news at that time, but obviously you know, there was Voyager, there was Celsius. I don't remember exactly when all of them, you know, had their bad news headlines. I don't have it all committed to memory, but, you know, those are the things that happened. And you can see that resulted in another drop from there, from that point of 43%. And it, again, look, you can see with your own human eyes here, the volume did increase, right? And, and what's, what's happened here is we've seen this bottoming out structure, though. You know, there's, there's a lot of volume, but it's like despite the increased volume, you're not seeing, you hadn't seen really Bitcoin break much lower. Like we've been ranging for the last several months or so until the terrible black swan event occurred the ftx news of ftx exchange just imploding because it turns out it was basically just a ponzi scheme well what happened then you saw a 26 percent drop and as reported by income sharks here the greatest selling volume in the history of bitcoin and it only dropped another 26 percent with that many humans there so you got it kind of begs the question how much lower could we actually go like I mean, if you have like a, another wild card event on a global scale and stocks tank because of that and well, crypto moves in tandem, so okay, fine. But I'm just saying, outside of stuff like that, don't you think it's more probable, not certain, but isn't it more probable that the bottom's in, we're, we're about there? Because I'll, I will tell you this, the people that were most likely to sell, they started selling, we you know, during this first 32% drop back in May. And then the people who were next most likely to sell, they sold during this 43% drop in the middle of June. And then the people who are next most likely to sell, they sold uh, just within the last week and a half or so after the FTX collapse. So who's left to sell? Because I'm one of the people that was never going to sell at any of those events, and I'm not. I'm never going to sell. 
at a loss. I'm, I'm never going to. In fact, I've been buying more. I made some of the largest cryptocurrency purchases that I ever have. Not literally my largest, but very close to it. Two days in a row, actually. And I'm not. So who's left here? Like, who's still here right now? Is it the people that are more likely to panic or less likely? It's the people who are less likely to panic, which means a bottom has to form eventually because there, there are a lot of people out here like me, for example. You know, I'm just saying. Um, and then here's what Ben Armstrong of BitBoy Crypto had to say. He said, crypto is not dead. No matter what happens with GBTC slash Genesis slash Silvergate, remember this. When Bitcoin was barely relevant, Mount Gox was hacked. That's the cryptocurrency exchange, Mount Gox. 90% of Bitcoin transactions happened there. Almost the entire market at one, at one place, gone, poof. And we survived and thrived. Exactly. And that's a very good point. Which, which is why, like, whatever happens here, yes, you can have absolute calamity. But there's something to crypto. It is not going away. There are people like me, and probably you listening to this, <clears throat> recognize that there's so much opportunity and there are things that can be done that are impossible without this technology. So no, we're not just going to let it go to zero. <clears throat> Hell no. And then there's this from the Daily Huddle. <clears throat> On-chain metrics suggest crypto is nearing the bottom of the bear market despite recent price woes into the block. Certain on-chain metrics indicate crypto could be nearing the bottom of the bear market, according to the analytics firm Into the Block. Lucas Utumuro, whose name I probably butchered, uh, head of research at Into the Block, notes in a new analysis that more than half of Bitcoin holders are losing money on their positions, a level not seen since March of 2020. In the 2015 bear market, that, that number peaked at 62%, and in 2018 it hit 55%. And Lucas explains the following. This is a quote. Having the majority of holders of an asset that has appreciated 25,000% since inception could be a sign of bearish momentum getting excessive. In 2015, it took six months for the majority of holders to be back into profits compared to three months in 2018. Bear, bear cycles appear to be getting shorter and with a smaller share of holders losing over time. This trend also favors the chances of a potential bottom being near, end quote. Um, and then, uh, piece continues, uh, Lucas also notes that long-term investors have been buying up Bitcoin amid the crypto market's price woes. The amount of Bitcoin held by addresses holding the king crypto for more than one year has increased by 2.7 million Bitcoin so far this year. And here's another quote from him. Check this out. And please let this sink in. I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but you need to be aware of this. Make your own informed decision, but please listen to this. This is the quote. Demand from long-term investors slowly creates a floor for Bitcoin in bear markets, and they typically begin to sell to new investors shortly after new all-time highs, end quote. ba -bam. <laughs> It doesn't get more simple than that. And I'm one of the people, I've been here a while, I've just... Give me the opportunity I'm going to purchase. Give me an opportunity to the flip side where prices are way high. If you entice me enough, I'm going to start selling. I still have not cashed out anything to USD ever. I've now been in crypto over five years. Never have. I am waiting, and I'm going to outpatient everyone else. I got enticed to buy down here at these prices. So I did, and I'm very glad that I did. Now, do I have enough XRP, though? Well, <laughs> there is an XRP community member uh, whose name is XRP Bobby 72 who wrote... What is a big bag of XRP? Be realistic. Now, look, that's a tough question because it's so subjective. It's, I mean, to somebody who's a billionaire buying something versus somebody who's in the middle class, you know, putting whatever money they can into an investment, whether it's, F, you know, it's XRP or anything else, it's rather subjective, you know? I, I, I get it. Different, and different strokes for different folks. I understand that too. And some, it's like you're going to have different comfort levels in terms of what percentage of your net worth you'd even invest in any given thing, whether it's XRP or crypto in general or stocks or real estate, pick your thing. So I, I get it. Everybody's a little bit different, but that is kind of why it's interesting to hear what people think would be a big size bag. And so there's um, somebody who goes by the name Denightful who responded and uh, effectively shared the tweets on the screen. He's basically saying that, you know, thinks that about 100,000 XRP would be a big bag, uh, which... I mean, by most standards, that's the, yes, that would be a big bag by most standards for most people. In fact, part of the reason I say that is if you look at 
uh, the on-chain metrics for XRP and the XRP ledger, you can see uh, what what size wallets are out there. And there are not that many that hold 100,000 XRP or more. Now, um, XRP community member Frecky uh, shared some perspective on this, and I ended up chiming in. Now, Frecky has been in crypto since 2011. That's when he first jumped into uh, Bitcoin. He happens to have a background in finance, and so he's he's one of the OGs of crypto. He's very pro XRP though. He's basically he's kind of like me in the sense that anywhere there's utility to be had, the answer is yes. That's where that's where I'm most interested. He happens to be the same. And I think that pretty much any crypto on the planet that doesn't solve real problems for real people at some point, once we reach sufficient maturity, I think all those are going to go away. You know. Um, and then uh, so Frecky said the following on this topic. He goes, 100,000 is a good target for most." Of course, the more you stack, the lower your exit price needs to be as long as you don't continuously move the goalposts as you accumulate. Yeah, exactly. So a couple of things on this. I know 100000 is going to sound like to most people a lot. And granted, at, at today's price, which is $0.39 cents for XRP at the time I'm recording this, you know, in order to have 100000 XRP, you know, I'm no math wizard, but th that would cost $39,000 roughly. So I get that's a lot of money to pretty much anyone, not literally everyone, but to a lot of people. And that's why also it's just like, where are our priorities? Because like the people that would say that's too much, oh, I'm never going to be able to do that. How many of them out there have a car payment that's over $500 a month though? You know, I said, because then you, you imagine that over five years. So it's $6,000 a year. So if you're five years, six, 12, 18, 24, that's 30 grand right there after five years. And that's a depreciating asset. So it just, it kind of depends on what you want and can you engage in delayed gratification in life? Because like, that's the mark of a responsible adult, in my opinion. And for me, the answer is yes. So, you know, I, I'm happy to wait. I, I don't care. The, the fluctuations with my net worth with crypto, it's all over the place. It's been way up. It's been way down. I, I don't care. It's, it's trending upwards. And as long as I can, you know, I've got income streams, what my net worth is on paper doesn't matter. It, it really does. I'm just waiting for a certain level. And so I've done what I feel that I need to do. But even for middle class people, what I want to get at it, it's not literally impossible to have gigantic quantities of XRP or pick your crypto, which is not me telling you to go and do that. Just to be clear, I want you to do whatever you want, whether it's buy or sell or hold, just you, you know, participate, don't participate, doesn't matter to me. I'm just sharing some, some of my own thoughts. This is kind of just how I look at this in general. But yes, even people of more modest means absolutely can have life-changing amounts of, of crypto and XRP specifically. I just, it, to me, crypto is like the way for the everyday person with where we are now, it's still an opportunity for the everyday person to achieve life-changing wealth. And I think that's just such an empowering message. I don't think most people are going to achieve it because, well, pe most people are, they're emotional creatures, typical Lemming investors where when panic begins, then they feel the feels and it's scary and then they want to sell. And so right there, like people are their biggest hurdle. I firmly believe that. I've thought that for, well, I've thought that since before I jumped into crypto. You know, even if you just look at the stock market, I understand people are their own, own worst enemy when it comes to investing. Like the people who make the most money investing, even if you're just looking at the stock market, it's the people who don't do anything. They buy it and then they just hold for decades and decades. Now, in the case of crypto, you don't necessarily have to wait decades and decades you know, to have ridiculous results, but that's the cool part. It's because there's more volatility, there's less money in crypto, which means it doesn't take as much money flowing in to get a multiplier effect. That's awesome. And so I have positioned myself accordingly, and I'm going to continue to be patient. I'm not the least bit impatient, to be honest with you. So I responded to Frecky there, and I'm not going to say how much XRP I have, whether it's more than that or less than that. I'm just going to say that I have what to me is a lot of XRP. And so I wrote the following. I've accumulated enough that once we see a new all-time high for XRP and it enters price discovery, that will be enough for me to get what I want out of it. That means I had to invest slash risk more upfront, which is the trade-off but I get to exit sooner, that's my plan. And, I, and that's exactly what I've done. So, uh, you know, when I, I, I even made videos about this. I can't remember exactly when, but it would have been in maybe even starting September when I started making what to me were just ridiculously large purchases subjectively, what that means to me. And I remember talking about it because the, the first time I did, I was like, no, I want to do this. I feel this is right. I just, I know I got to take the, the, this opportunity. 
and I, and I had the money, but I just I'm just I wasn't used to doing transactions at a certain level. I'll just say that. And so after I did, I was like, whoa, mama. I just like went in the kitchen, and poured myself a shot of something. I don't know if it was whiskey or something. I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's threw back. I was like, all right. <laughs> but, um, but you know, and again, it's, it's different for everybody. But um, I just I wanted to make sure that I had the exposure because I feel very confident in my positions. And if I'm wrong, fine. Maybe I lose everything. It goes to zero. That's a possibility, I guess. But I want the exposure here. And so for me, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to have the, you know, the exposure for as short a time period as possible. So I just looked at like the, the price of XRP, you know, what its all time high was during the last market cycle hitting close to four bucks. And I thought, well, my gosh, even if it does like a two or three X from it's, it's, you know, it's all time high of close to four bucks. I was like, damn. And it's so cheap right now. I was like, it's kind of easy to stack right now. And that's what I was thinking. And so I stacked and I stacked and I stacked and I, I did spend years literally dollar cost averaging in on multiple exchanges. And and then my plan, it, it's and I've talked about this before, it's it's so that when we get to that point, even if we just had like a 2x, let's just say we had a 2x from the previous all time high of almost four bucks. I wanted that to be sufficiently life changing for me that I'm willing to sell all like either all of it or almost all of it. And so that did mean that I had to invest and risk more upfront, but that would mean also I wouldn't have to stay in it as long as many others might necessarily have to if they didn't do the same thing, you know? So th that's just the way that I was looking. But, but it does mean, yes, oh, I risk more. I certainly did. So that's a trade-off. Because if I'm wrong, I lose that much more. But, I, I, you know, I can exit the position much sooner. And, I, and I, would, I would potentially sell all of my XRP, but understand that I put in enough to where I'm good. Because the point is taking the risk off the table. I understand I could sell, a, say I sold it all at eight bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. Say, say we get to that level. Well, you can laugh at me if you go like, see, it went to 20 bucks or 30 bucks or 50 bucks or pick your high number. And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. The point in me doing what I did, I took the extra risk so that I could take the risk off the table. I don't care. Yeah, I think XRP could be worth an absolute fortune beyond that. Oh, God, could, I think it could potentially go way, way, way higher than that. Doesn't mean I wouldn't sell all of it and then wait for, a, you know, a, for, you know, a bubble to fully form and then pop and then go back down. And then once I see, it looks like a bottom more or less has come in, then I'll just play the game again. I'll just jump back in because I think XRP is an, an amazing cryptocurrency. It continues to be useful. So even if you have a bubble inflate and pop and then go way, way, way back down, you're going to have a higher bottom than before, I would suspect anyway. And then once I see that happening, cool. You know, me selling my XRP after holding it for this many years, at this point over half a decade, when it finally happens, it doesn't mean I don't like XRP or don't think it has a future. No, 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 no. It's about my own personal plan and understanding how human psychology works. So when that happens, yeah, I, I may sell most or all of it. And that's just my plan. That's it. And and it, I'm not worried about selling the top. Even if during this market, this upcoming market cycle, whenever ever XRP finally hits its all time high, you know, if I'm right and that happens, even I don't care if it goes to 50 bucks. That's not for me. Me holding to 50 bucks ain't the cards. I, I, I'm telling you now I'm not doing it. Unless you're talking about the bubble inflating, popping, XRP finding a new bottom, and then I buy there and then maybe I hold for however long. That, okay, fine. That, that's, that would be fine. But if you're talking about, no, I'm not going to sell until it hits those levels. No, I, I risked extra up front so I don't need to do that. That's the point. And Frecky responded to me and said, exactly. That is the best tactical play. Best part is you can always hold 10% or some amount, let's say 100,000 coins in cold storage, and doesn't matter at that point. Can just let them cook for five to 10 years. And that's fair too. And everybody wants to do different things. So, and who knows? I'm not saying I, for sure I'm going to sell it all. I, it's, I, I just have a feeling that once we get to that point, either I'm going to sell the vast majority if, or all of it. But that's been my plan from the beginning. I've been very open about that. It's not like a secret thing. But aren't you trying to do this for profit too? <laughs> I think that's kind of the point of investing. And then it'll be too big a part of my net worth for me to not diversify that risk into something else. It'll be too great. I'm not willing to risk that. I don't want to. Why shouldn't I be able to, after that much time and that much risk that I that I took on and doing putting in the work to do the research to even determine if it made sense to do what I was doing, should I actually get, reach that level? I think it's more than reasonable, you know, to enjoy a little bit of that profit. Because right now, like I said, I've never cashed out any of my crypto into USD and I'm cool with that. But different strokes for different folks, you know? I'm not telling you to do this. This is just the way that I'm looking at this. 
And I always find it interesting to see how people approach this because different people want different things and that's perfectly fine. So it's not that there's necessarily a right or wrong answer, but I am curious uh, to hear the rationale for why people are doing the things that they're doing. And now you just heard mine. That's my rationale for doing what I'm doing. I just want to make sure I get out of it what I want. And, you know, with the amount of XRP I have, if I said, no, I'm not going to sell until it hits $50, I would feel like I'm being way too risky and way too greedy given the amount of money that I already put in. I'm just, I just ain't doing it. Ain't in the cards for me. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.